making excuses for my life and what I've done as I lay here asking you. Social service had intervened with me, um, telling me that I, because of my use of drug, crack cocaine, that I could not take my baby back home with me. Um, the daughter I talk about is my four-year-old. Hello? Who are you? Danielle. Danielle? <laughs> she likes that. Good girl. I have a 20-year-old right now, 18-year-old, 11-year-old son, and a four-year-old baby little girl. Her aunt and her grandmother had done an intervention with social services by making an allegation of me living in my car, which um, wasn't true for me living in my car, but I had used drugs. At that time, they told me they was not letting my daughter go back to New York with me, and the only way I could retrieve my daughter was they had to comply to the plan they had put together. And they said, well, you're a crack addict, and I'm looking to say, no, I'm not. Because I'm not walking around with my head tore up, and I have jewelry on, and I have car keys, and I have a house that I can go to, but it wasn't one of my own. My children have clean clothes, and they look good. You can't tell me that. I had a problem. So after going through the healing place in Wake County, it was one thing I identified when I got there, that I needed to do what it needed to be done. And the healing place in Wake County, the program is more unique than the other programs is because for a recovery program, it addressed attitudes and behaviors. Because long before I picked up a drug, there was already a problem. And I identified that there. That I suffered from a disease that was a feeling disease. So the, the, the problems that I had, of low self-esteem, feeling inadequate, inadequate, feeling um, abandoned, um, feeling rejected, not feeling a part of, had already been there before I picked up the drugs and alcohol. They just manifested more and more in my life and with the drugs and alcohol tried to suppress them, which after a while didn't work anymore. I was afraid, I was spiritually broken, very disappointed from the things that have taken place, um, mentally just broken and physically just be town. But what I know today it was the beginning of a new life for me. Because from that moment on I did everything that they asked me to do. They asked me to go into a program to retrieve housing, to stable employment, and to show that I could be a productive member of society. Now the Healing Place for Women is a homeless shelter with a recovery program. And the first thing in my mind when I hear homeless shelter, I'm not homeless because my family members have plenty of houses. I just didn't have one of my name on it at the moment. <laughs> oh, 18th of August, 2006 was the beginning of a new life. I came into the recovery program. It started off in the overnight shelter to the um, phase one part of the program is what addressed attitudes and behaviors. I completed that program. In 2007, in February, I became a part-time detox shelter monitor at the Healing Place of Wake County. In April, I became a full-time detox shelter monitor. After completing their program, I'm working as a staff member. They saw something in me that I didn't see in myself yet, and they told me that I had the ability to lead the rest of these women in this program if I stayed consistent. In July of 2007, I became the program supervisor. I supervise every woman that comes through that program today. What I learned in there was who can best identify, understand what's going on with somebody that has gone through the same thing that I have. So I relate to them very well because I don't ask them to do anything that wasn't asked for me to do. And I know it works today and I can show them the results when I stand before them every day. I taught classes before I became a staff member. The same recovery dynamic classes that were taught to me, I taught to them. And I think that's what works so well about it because it's a peer-based program. Because it's not a hand out, it's a hand up. And if you learn to let people help you today, then take the hand up. Once I complied with what they said, my daughter was released to me. And then I went to New York to go get my son. And Danielle came back the 1st of August. Danielle was in the house with me at Passage Homes. I got the Passage Homes and they said, well, you want to be part of this program? There's some things that you're going to have to do. Um, she said that I had to complete a plan and write some goals and do some things. So I did what they asked me to do. I just transitioned from 
transitional housing to permanent housing, where I'm in right now here at Bride Creek, the only goal that I have not completed was to buy a house. In the Healing Place of Wake County, I have a support group that I've started. It's a support group for mothers that are in recovery and try to balance being a mother on a day-to-day -day basis and take care of their recovery as well. Because the first thing, I gotta take care of me so that I can take care of my children so that I can be that productive person in society, so that I can be that example to those women in the healing place. Tired of making excuses for my life and what I've done as I lay here basking in the sun. I remember when life used to be simple and pure and lovely. Tired of making excuses for my life and what I was Tomorrow. 